Shall we start, sir? Yes, madam. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning to one and all present here. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome our distinguished speaker of today's webinar, Dr. Mr. A. Felix, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Bellu Institute of Technology, Chennai. I extend my warm welcome to respected Madam Principal, Dr. Mrs. S. Kodai, Vice Principal, Dr. D.B. Usharani, Aider, and Dr. Usha Priya Self Sabuti, our head of the department, Mrs. K. Prasanna Lakshmi, my colleagues, and my dear students. We are grateful to our college management for giving us the opportunity to organize this webinar. On behalf of the Department of Mathematics with Computer Application, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Mr. A. Felix, for accepting our invitation to address the students on the topic, the evolution of cryptography through number theory. Dr. Mr. A. Felix, currently working as an assistant professor of mathematics, BIT Chennai, he has over six years of teaching experience. He has completed his master's degree in mathematics from Loyola MPhil, also PhD from Loyola College. He is currently guiding six PhD students and published more than 50 papers in standard journals. He received six awards, namely Outstanding Scientist Award, Eng Research Award, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad Award, National Fellowship Award. I'm sure that the participants will feel enriched with the knowledge of the, after this seminar. I would welcome you all once again to this webinar and hope that you will have a great time ahead. I request our distinguished speaker, Dr. Mr. A. Felix, to take over the session. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your uh, welcome, nice sir. Thank yes, you, ma'am. Yes, I'll start okay. sharing my screen. Yes, yes. Ma'am, is my screen visible? Yes, is sir. My screen? Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. See, okay. first of all, uh, let me thank the management of Etheraj College for Women a department of mathematics with a computer application and head of the department and all the faculties of uh, department of mathematics with the computer application uh, for providing me this wonderful opportunity to interact uh, to the student fraternities and uh, on commemoration of uh, ramanujam's 134th birthday anniversary uh, I'm invited to be the resource person to give a talk on the evolution of uh, cryptography through number theory. And since uh, this is 134th Ramanujam birthday year, we need to remember uh, what Ramanujam has contributed. He has contributed a lot uh, to the number theory and the infinite series. So Ramanujam, the man who knew the infinity. So he has built what would happen the series sequence at the infinity such a great eminent uh, genius that we got at tamil nadu uh, you know uh, so definitely audi is not there he was not there definitely ramanujam would have not been known to this world okay ghrd who recognized ramanujam and uh, gave all the support and uh, to bring it out all the talent that he had possessed. When Ramanujam was ill, he was admitted at the hospital and there was the conversation between Ramanujam and GHRD. And Audi said, I was coming in a car, the number was Vidal. And Ramanujam was asked, what was the number? He said 1729. And immediately Ramanujam said, this is a beautiful number. This is the smallest number that can be expressed as the sum of two cubes in a two different ways. Okay. So even he was not well at the time and he was always playing with the numbers. 
Therefore, JHRD would say every past two integer was one of Ramanujan's personal friends. So you could see this, this, and later it becomes the taxi cab number. Okay, so this is the smallest number, 1729, that can be expressed as a sum of a uh, cube of two numbers in a two different ways. Similarly, we can express the taxi cab for three number three, four, five, six. And later, for seven, eight, nine, they have given only the upper bounds. It's an interesting thing. Okay. So today we will be talking on the evolution of uh, cryptography through number theory. Okay. So always we want to send the message to our friends or to our neighbor secretly without the message should not be broken by the third people. It is not now, thousands of years ago also, during the kingdom, always they wanted to send the message or send the information secretly to the other people without being broken by the, the third people. How this can be done? And if you look at 4,000 years ago, Egyptian used this aerologic concepts. They used the images. They used the images to send the information on behalf of the king, king, a reliable person who would be sending the messages through the images to the people, to the other king. Okay. Through the images, they could recognize the information. This could not be uh, stolen easily. Okay. Later, once we identified this is the image we are representing the meaning, then later this could also be broken. Okay. This is also not strengthened enough. And after 500 to 600 BC, you know, uh, they use a substitution method. And before the substitution method, what the king who really used to do this, suppose the war was going, you know, usually the war would be going month and month and year and year. Suppose king wants to send a message to the, the uh, what is it, marshal, the captain of the soldier. So what he would do, he would identify a reliable person. The rela on the reliable person, it is the head would be shaved, and something the information would be written on his head, and he has to wait till the hair comes back to the original position, and later he could be sent to them where the war was going on, and then the, if he, he was caught by the 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 captain of uh, soldier then easily the message can be taken and they could go ahead what the king has instructed. If he was caught by the, the opposite king, kingdom, what they would do? They might have not sensed that something was written on his head. If they sensed, then what? The message could be stolen. Still, it is not strengthened enough. Instead, what they would do, instead of this, we can do some substitution. Instead of A, they would substitute some other concepts. Okay, A plus instead of A, they will be assigning a values to the uh, uh, alphabets and then they are substituting by using plus two. Okay, through that also they have sent, okay, that is a substitution method. And then another method is called skytel. So everyone will have this kind of ruler. Okay, this ruler, what they will do, they will rotate some paper, some something on it and write the, something in this one, one particular, uh, you know, here, suppose they want to send the message, leave. The rest of the position, after removing it, you can fill it. We can fill it something, and then we can send it to the person. The person will also have the same scale or same ruler or same stick. So what they would do, they will rotate, and one side, they could easily find it out what the information was given to them. So actually, this is how the information was shared, okay, the secret way. But suppose if the third people will have this kind of stick, what happened? They can rotate and see what was the information is there. They could easily steal. Okay. Actually, this and later, uh, before this, you know, uh, Julius Caesar, you know, the Roman method is called the shifting method. As I said, instead of A, they would shift some letters. This is shifting method. This was used by the Romans. And later in 19th century only, this cryptographic concept has been evolved by using a lot of mathematical concepts. And this is one of the Enigma mission was used by the German people. Only the only German people had this kind of Enigma mission. So by rotating this, okay, something, the letters would be there. If you rotate, some suppose I want to send the message leave. 
okay we will keep leave and rotate it with the two or three or four rotation and whatever i obtain that message would be given to the uh, people uh, uh, suppose uh, the german uh, hitler wanted to send the message to the captain of the soldier by rotating something what the the marshal would do that he knows how many rotations he would uh, back way he would rotate and you would get the information and go ahead what uh, the uh, hitler has said so aiming more machine was used by the germanist people well but here the lot of mathematical concepts the matrix operations are being used initially only the arithmetic operation addition subtraction were used later they used the modular arithmetic matrix concepts okay and oilsp function so many concepts are used from this you know the cryptography has been evolved okay by incorporating a lot of mathematical concepts okay when you feel this this crypto system is strong enough if it is broken we need to bring another strong crypto system by incorporating the lot of mathematical concepts okay fine so this is the julius caesar who created this by adding by changing or sub, by uh, shifting a letter to some other letter okay so if the soldier carries the same message then easily it is it would be broken instead of this what you would do you will be taking a to d b to e c to f okay alphabets are assigned a value 0 to z 26 and then shift by 3 so if you do shift by 3 a is d t will go to w like this and if he carries this message then it could not be broken this is the julius caesar uh, in cipher system okay mostly roman people were used to this okay fine so what is the cryptography cryptography is sending information secretly to the person without being broken by the the third people and i cannot send the message directly isn't it i cannot send the message that should be coded that should be cipher are coded okay so the study of the encoding and decoding secret messages is called a cryptography okay so what i have a plain text plain text is the the text law this is the plain text okay and if i send this message we could not uh, we could easily traced out instead of plain text this should be ciphered okay so are coded i'll be making code the coded word instead of this i'll be making yeah what is that you will be taking plus 2 shifting this plus 2 and whatever you are getting if you are getting this this little tough for us to trace it out okay and this is the plain text and coded text encoding is conversion from plain to coded okay from plain text to the coded text is the encoding okay and decoding is from coded to the plain text is the decoding so the study of encoding decrypt uh, encoding decoding a secret message is called a cryptography okay fine so there are uh, two communication cryptography one such communication and another communication that we should also know that is the steganography okay steganography this is there are two ways we can communicate one is the steganography and cryptography and steganography here the message would be hidden okay and something might be written on the paper but nothing could be seen the invisible ink we, if you write nothing we could view in the paper okay this is kind of steganography if you give heat or apply something on the paper and we can see the message this is steganography whereas the cryptography is the message is discussed instead of hidden okay the message would be change one form to another form but it is not hidden but here we will be dealing only with the cryptography okay but mostly for a secret communication the cryptography concepts are very well used okay fine yes but older method is the substitution cipher okay so what they would do they will be suppose this is the plain text okay so cipher here the plain text want to convert it into the cipher text this is is the n ciphering okay n ciphering 
so here what we are trying to do this the plain text plus three let me take k is a three okay so the resultant would be the cipher text p plus three what would happen plain suppose ramanujam this is the message i want to give the r position is r plus three okay r plus three so we know this r plus three s t u similarly a a plus three t we can do this uh, this is the plain text to the cipher text is the n ciphering n cipher how one can find it out the decipher you send this message to the your friend okay now she wanted to decipher how she could do this this number can be shared between anita and mala okay let us take anita and mala they are good friends they can share their key so what anita does she takes the key of mala okay three and she send it she knows the inverse of this additive inverse minus three by subtracting this she could get back three, the plain text okay so what is this this is the symmetric private key symmetric they can share the key each other this is the symmetric symmetric cipher what is that the three their key is being shared symmetric or this is called the private key either symmetric cipher or private key if they are not sharing the only n ciphering key is shared but d ciphering key has not been shared this is called the public key or asymmetric key okay asymmetric system the substitution cipher is the symmetric system because they can share three three and this is a three would be the enciphering take a key minus three is the deciphering key so this could be shared among them this is symmetric asymmetric means she could share only the enciphering key but the inverse mala won't share to anybody she alone knows okay that is the asymmetric system there are two system one is a symmetric another one is asymmetric here as i said and olden days they have used only the arithmetic addition subtraction okay and later they have used the concurrence modulo and then euler's five function matrix concepts okay to make the system or crypto system stronger and stronger okay fine the thing is the what is the deciphering is easy but deciphering it would take a lot of time i won't say this deciphering cannot be done can be done but it would take a lot of time within that whatever the work was assigned we were able to finish it up fine okay so this congruence modulo in in uh, uh, undergraduate students you are you would have learned the congruence modulo in your number theory a congruent b mod n consider n is some fixed positive integer a and b or b or two integer then a congruence b mod n if and only if n divides a minus b this is given by the the gauss okay gauss so in 17th century 18th century the great mathematician would live so the gauss contribution you know this okay how the ramanujam lived in uh, uh, in tamil nadu the same way gauss was there and uh, you would have seen the ramanujam movie okay a teacher said when a number is divided by the same number the uh, what is it the quotient would be what is it one when ramanujam asked what would happen if zero divided by zero will we get one but sir din answer for it like this happened to gas as well okay when math teacher was uh, being engaged to some particular class he asked uh, find it out the sum of first hundred numbers the first sum Hundred numbers immediately. Gas is given the answer. So you know those days the slates were used, black slates, and he gave the answer immediately. And then Sir was shocked, and then he looked at him like uh, or the scornfully. Okay, and uh, later he checked. He went to home and checked. The answer was correct, and he gave the what is it? The sum of first natural number is the ending ten plus one by two. like this so many things gas has produced so one such as the the congruence modulo n is given by the gas okay but here we will be using this congruence modulo n congruence modulo n okay modulo n 
congruence arithmetic would be used okay zn would be the integer modulo n okay so when the set integer is divided by n fix some integer the possible remainders are 0 1 till n minus 1 this is the integer modulo n and then another one is u n is the the multiplicative modulo n okay this is the the this is the integer modulo n this is the multiplicative modulo n this would be the subset of your the integer modulo n such that if if you take any number any uh, anything from your u such that for any v u dot v would be one this is the the multiplicative modulo n this would be used for the eyeless phi function okay fine so here the congruence modulo n would be used okay so all the letters a b c uh, to z uh, 26 alphabets are taken which are assigned the values from 0 to 25 okay fine so if you look at the previous the julius caesar substitution method where we could easily trace it out this is the message attack message was there this is being changed into something by t what is it t plus 3 plain text plus 3 we could easily identify the frequency here only one frequency has been used so from some uh, yeah, what is it by using uh, the statistical ideology we could easily trace it out uh, the the frequency okay what frequency has been used because only one frequency has been used the entire words we could easily trace it out instead what we can do we can do the we can divide the group of letters and then we can cipher it instead of doing a ciphering the whole cipher ciphering in the entire word what we can do you can divide them into group of and then do the group ciphering and this ciphering is called polio ciphering suppose you have uh, the letters which are being divided into n groups and then each groups are ciphered and in this situation it is really tough for us to identify the n ciphering okay or when you it is tough for us to decipher as well okay so this is concepts ill cipher in 1929 in 19th century he proposed the idea of instead of ciphering the entire word okay it is tough it is easy to find it out the frequency and we can easily steal the message what we can do you can divide the words into groups and then we can cipher it that is the ideology he has given okay so for that what he has used the system of linear equation alone this is he has taken a x is equal to b okay so a would be some matrix okay this is the matrix everybody will have a number like this everyone will have a, some two by two matrix or three by three matrix so let us take two by two matrix mala is a two by two matrix okay so sheila wants to send the message to mala okay so mala has this two by two matrix okay two by two matrix okay she this is the what is that she can give the n ciphering key but deciphering key the inverse of this matrix she won't reveal it so here x is the the plain text b is the cipher text okay the plain text would be ciphered through the matrix a okay so if it is a is a two by two matrix we will be making the word into the into what is that into two letters into we are dividing into pair of words okay so she, Ma, sheila wants to send the message at leave okay she wants to send the message what she does to the mala has two by two matrix she will be dividing into pair of elements okay then only you can do the transformation through this matrix two by two matrix l e e v since this letters whose length is odd number therefore what you can do you can add some dummy if it is odd you can add some dummy value okay so now it make, becomes a pair of elements okay now you, what you can do you can the l position and e position you know this you can transform them to get this plain text similarly another pair a we will be taking okay similarly e now to get back this is the n ciphering n cipher to decipher what mala would do she knows the inverse of the matrix under mod 26 so x is a inverse 3 multiplied by a inverse on both sides you can have x is equal to a inverse b so whatever that the n ciphered 
the coded value we obtain, which can be transformed through the CA image to get the D plain text, the decoded message, D cipher. Okay, fine. This is the ideology in cipher as proposed by using the, the system of linear education, but using the, the congruence modulo concepts. So look at this, choose, choose two by two matrix, and then group the successive plain text into pairs, and then if it is odd, add a dummy variable, okay? Okay, transform them through the matrix, whatever the resultant would be the, the uh, coded word. Okay, fine. Suppose, let us take love, this is the message. So mala as, this is the number 23, 15, 7. This is the two by two matrix. Okay. So Sheila wants to send this message love. Okay. So L position is L position 11 and 14 position, O, o position is 14. Yes. Okay. So this would be transformed through this matrix. This is the resultant. Only the 26 letters are there. Therefore, we are using the, the modular. 26 modular arithmetic concepts when 2 to 62 is divided by 26 what is the remainder it leaves it leaves the remainder 2 isn't it congruence modulo a congruence b mod n so we know this a congruence b mod n suppose let us take n is some fixed positive integer 26 okay so uh, let us take um, a is 28 then what will happen when 28 is divided by 26 what is the remainder it leaves it leaves the remainder 2 mod 26 if and only if 26 divides 28 minus 2 okay fine so the 262 is divided by 26 it leaves the remainder 2 similarly 263 is divided by 26 it leaves the remainder 3 therefore it comes under z26 2 3 isn't it Z26 in the sense you can have the, the set of all possible remainder 0, 1, 2 till 25. Okay, 0 class, 1 class, and 25 classes. Okay, 0 class in the sense the set of all integers which leaves remainder 0. Similarly, 1 class, the set of all integers leaves remainder 1. Similar 25 class, 25 class, the set of all integer leaves a remainder is 25. All the integers would be there. This is the integer modulo 26. So what you can do, all the integers are being, a, bring it into the, the, the classes, into classes, okay. So by, with this, what is it, whatever elements you have, you can bring it within this class, fine. And the next term is B, E. B position 21 and E position is 4. Transform them, this is the resultant we have. When it is divided by 26, these are the remainder it leaves 16th position is q and fifth position is f the second position is c and d uh, what is the third position is d c d q f this is the message uh, sheila sent to mala now what mala would do mala wants to view this okay she could what is the decipher through her a inwards this matrix a inverse under mod 26, only the Mala knows. Isn't it? Sheila, she won't reveal to the Sheila, to anybody. Okay, this is the asymmetric public key. Okay, fine. Okay, so now we need to find the inverse of this. Okay, how we can find it out the inverse. Okay, so let us see this. So instead, we know this A congruent B mod N. A congruent B mod N. Okay, mod n. This if and only if n divides a minus b. This is congruence modulo n. Suppose if you want to find it out the, the the inverse of the of an any element. Okay, so consider let us take here z n is the the set of all positive. Uh, uh, what is it? Set of all integer leaves a remainder zero one till n minus. Okay, integer modulo n, which leaves the the remainders. Okay, fine. Now let us take an element, A belongs to Zn, and definitely the inverse will also be Zn. We have already seen this, the integer modulo n under, uh, what is it, uh, removal of zero class from here, it forms a group under multiplication, okay. 
So Z n star, you know, this is the removal of zero class, which is the group under multiplication. We know that. Okay. So A belongs to Z n. A inverse will also be in Z n. Then, and if you want to find it out, how one can find it out the inverse of this A. So we can find it out A and A inverse will give one or A inverse into A congruent mod n. Okay. Using this, we can find it out the inverse of this element. So because here, if you do the determinant, what is it? Uh, if you find it of the inverse, what is it? One upon one by determinant of A and a joint of A. This is the inverse of the matrix. We know this. One by something is there. Then we need to find it out the inverse under mod 26. For that, we need to know the, what is it? The reciprocal of an element or multiplicate inverse of mod N. So for example, let us take, let me take, uh, n is equal to 26 okay okay let us take n is equal to excuse me okay n is equal to 26 let me take i want to find it out the the inverse reciprocal inverse for 3 okay i want to find it out 3 inverse so we know this a into a inverse 1 congruent 1 mod 26 we know this isn't it let us assume that 3x is equal to x okay so what is that 3 into x 1 mod 26 okay 3x bring this minus this side then this will be is equal to 26k where k belongs to z okay. so 3x 26k plus 1 so what k can be taken so that this 26 into k plus 1 divides this 3. So what we can take? So if you take k is equal to 1, you will be getting 27. So 27 is divided by 3. So 27 by 3. So what is this? 9. So 9 is the, the inverse of 3 under mod 26. Okay. Suppose if you are getting the determinant is 3, so what is that? 1 by 3. The inverse of 1 by 3 would be the 9 we will be writing under mod 26. Find the multiplicative inverse. So here, the multiplicative inverse is also going to be used while finding the, the inverse of this matrix. Fine. So here, we need to understand this. When you can have the, the multiplicative inverse, the greatest common divisor between the GCD of a number and the n. Okay, you are taking some uh, the multiplicative inverse for that number n should be 1. They are they should be relatively prime each other. They're relatively prime. A number two numbers are relatively prime each other if the greatest common divisor is 1. So a and n should be 1. Then only you can have the multiplicative inverse. Otherwise, you cannot have. So for some reciprocal residue modulo 26. For 1, we can have for 3, 9, 5, 21. Whereas 2, 26, 2, the greatest common divisor between 2 and 26 is not 1, isn't it? It's 2. Therefore, this is not relatively prime. Therefore, 2, 4, 13 do not have the inverse as they are not co-prime. Okay, this we need to understand. Fine. Now, let us find the, the inverse of this particular matrix. Okay. So, look at this. We know this. So, we have taken the determinant is, what is it? 17. The inverse of 17. So you can do this. So what is that? 17 x, let us take x is equal to 17 inverse 1 mod 26. So 17 x minus 1 is equal to 26 k. Choose k so that it would divide uh, this 17. So we'll be getting 23 and then multiply them whatever the result you have. And then under mod 26, you will be getting 5, 9, 19, 18. Okay, and this is the, the inverse of the matrix. Okay, so the encryption is done. Ax is equal to b. Decryption would be done by a inverse b. Okay, so under mod 26, we are doing this a inverse. So c th position is 2, d th position is 3, q th position is 16, and 5. Now this is being transformed through this and whatever we are under mod 26, 11, 14, 21, 4. Okay, shiga. Now, Mala obtained the message. She could decrypt the message, what she has sent. Fine. 
and this is also easily the finding the inverse of the matrix would be easy okay so you know for two by three of course if you are using three by three four by four we can do this but if you make a program or if you are have a sense of doing the uh, inverse it can be easily broken okay it can be easily broken once you find the inverse of this matrix we can easily broken okay so how we can strengthen the system how we can strengthen the crypto system okay in 1977 three great people ron adil shamir and leonard edelman uh, used this uh, created this system or is a crypto system okay this is one of the powerful system that are being used widely okay and this system is being inculcated or incorporated a lot of uh, number theory concepts okay number theory but here here they have used what is modular expansion congruence modular multiplicative inverse ILS phi function okay so all the things that are being used okay so leonard euler so in the 17th century the great mathematician who lived is the versatile mathematician he did uh, medicine physics and all mathematics literature and philosophy in all the domain you take definitely leonard euler would be there if Euler was not there, definitely we could not be the great uh, professor and great mathematicians. Okay, and uh, last 17 years they lived with uh, uh, without vision. His vision was impaired for the last 17 years. And people would say, and uh, even at the last breath, and uh, he was having a cup of coffee, and then he died while doing some mathematical results. His contribution lot. Okay, so the Euler contribution would also be viewed in this uh, the lecture. Fine. Yes, Euler's pi function. So here pi n is the the number of non-negative integer less than n that are relatively prime to n. Okay. So in other words, we could also say this: the pi n is the the number of elements in u n. So z n we have seen this the set of all. Uh, Zn is the integer modulo n, whereas un is the un is a subset of your Zn, which is a multiplicative modulo n. Okay, so for example, you can see this. What is the pi of n? Is the number of non-negative integer that is less than less than n that are relatively prime to n. So pi of n, one. This is obviously one, and pi of two you can take. Okay, we should take less than the number should be less than two one only one is there one comma two are relatively prime yes only one okay pi of three if you take pi of three and you have to take an element which is less than three one one three are relatively prime and two three yes they are relatively prime so therefore the pi of three should be two and then pi of four we can take pi of four is one and one comma four relatively prime and 2, 2 comma 4 are not relatively prime. So 2 is not coming. 3 and 4, they are relatively prime. So the pi of 4 is the 2. Pi of 3 is 2. And pi of 5, you can have 1, 2 will come, 3 will come, and 4. Okay. This is pi of 5. So pi of 5 would be 4. Okay. And u of 5, okay. z5, we know this. What is that? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Whereas u5 is the, the multiplicative modulo n. And if you take an element u and take a b, okay, for some v, then if then this would be the inverse of this. Okay. So here the since it is a multiplicative modulo n, 0, 1 becoming 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So pi of phi is the, the cardinality of the u5. Okay, pi of n is the number of elements in u5. So in other words, we could say pi n is the number of non-negative integer less than n that are relatively prime to n. So for this phi 6 we have done. How would you identify for phi 10, 15 and all? Okay, how we can identify the number of elements in phi of n? So pi of n is the number of non-negative integers that, that are less than n which are relatively prime to you that, that n. Okay. So that is given this result. If p is a prime, then phi of p is equal to p minus 1. 
because if p is a prime number oh, what is that then uh, one and the number itself would be the divisor therefore from one to p minus one are relatively prime to p of course zero is not there okay so for example if you take pi of seven then what would be the pi of seven here one two one seven is relatively prime two seven is relatively prime three seven relatively prime four seven relatively five seven six okay so one two three four five six elements would be there so therefore we can write what is that seven is a prime number pi of p is equal to p minus one okay this result because this results are going is used at the rs secret system okay. another result is p is a prime and a is a positive integer then okay for example let us take what is it uh, we shall take 100 okay we shall take an uh, or yes n is equal to 32 let us take n is equal to 32 this can be expressed as 2 power 4 so pi of 2 power 4 is what is it by using this result so if you have a pi of 32 definitely it is really difficult for us to find it out the pi of 32 highest pi function the number of non-negative integers less than n that are relatively prime to this 32 it's really tough so for that what we can make the given n in terms of p power alpha where p is a prime number 2 is a prime and if we have then this can be made it as 2 alpha minus 2 alpha minus 1 what is this 3 so 32 minus 16 therefore 16 pi of 32 is 16 okay 16 elements would be there in un that are relatively prime to this 32 okay fine another result is n if you have uh, any prime any number that can be factored into into two prime okay into into prime numbers prime factorization this is nothing but the the prime factorization okay so this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic 2000 years ago euclid's has given if n is greater than one is an integer that can be factorized as the the product of primes in exactly one way okay. that we know this fine so here what we shall take let us take n is equal to uh, 200 so let us take n is equal to 200 this can be factored as uh, into 25 into 8 okay this 25 is expressed as 5 square into this can be expressed as 2 power cube okay now we can do this what is it pi of 200 is is expressed as pi of 25 into pi of 8 and then this pi of 25 is pi square pi of 2 power 3 by using the above results what will happen this is pi square 25 minus 5 this is what is that 2 cube 8 minus 4 altogether how many terms are there here 20 minus into 4 so eighty elements would be there okay pi of 200 okay 80 elements 80 numbers are there that are relatively prime to this 200 fine okay this results are also being going to be used and then so n is a positive integer so n can be factorized as into this prime numbers okay p1 uh, e1 p2 e part 2 and pk e part k then then pi of n can be expressed okay so for example let us take n is equal to this number 31752 okay okay this can be factorized as factored as 2 power 3 into 3 power 4 into 7 power 2 and then by using this pi of 2 power 3 into 3 power 4 into 7 power 2 okay by using the above results so what you can have so this will be 2 power 3 minus 2 power square and then this is 3 power 4 minus 7 square minus 7 so we'll be getting this would be the the pi of 
this by prime factorization. Okay, so look at this. This number is taken 31752. This itself we have a lot of difficulty. If you take more highly composite number, okay, that can be factorized to factor into the prime numbers. Is it easy? Really, really tough for us. So therefore, this in the RS crypto system they have used the prime factorization concepts. Okay, fine. This is the interesting RS crypto system. Okay, fine. And here, the first thing what they will do, they will choose large two primes, P and Q, would be chosen randomly. P and Q chosen randomly. Okay, and then compute P into Q. So that will be your end. And after this, P and Q are the prime numbers. We are able to find it out pi of n, isn't it? Pi of n, P minus one into Q minus one. This will be done at this step three. Okay. And at step four, choose an integer between one and pi. So pi of n. Okay. Between them, choose a e such that the e and pi of n should be the uh, GCD is one. Can anyone tell me why we are taking? The greatest common divisor between e and pi is one. Anyone? Okay, fine. So here, why do we need to find it out? Already we have seen this. The what is it? Inverse can exist for an element and the the n if they are relatively prime. Multiplicative inverse. We have seen right. Multiplicative inverse is possible if an element is relatively prime to the the modular n. Okay, therefore, we are taking the greatest common divisor e and pi is one such e we are taking. Okay, and then what we have to do? We at the fifth step we need to find it out the uh, what is it? Multiplicative inverse for the c. Multiplicative inverse. I told you how the multiplicative inverse can be determined. Okay, determine d d congruence e inverse mod pi n. Where d is the the modular multiplicative inverse of your e. Okay. So, and then compute the secret component in d. The d would also be lies between one and two pi n such that d into e congruent one mod pi n. And here, look at this. This n and your e will be given. You will be given public key. Okay, like your phone number and mail ID. n and e you will be given this is the public key okay but you won't give your d d the inverse of your e and your prime numbers p and q okay only this the composite number n alone you will give and you won't what is it reveal the prime numbers p q and the inverse of your e this is the private key the public key would be the n and your e okay And keep all the values t, p, q, q, and even the i-less pi function secret. And of course, the n is known as the modulus. Okay. And here e is known as the the encryption exponent, and d is known as the decryption ex exponent. Fine. Now let us uh, make a function encryption and decryption. Okay. Encrypting the plain text m into the cipher text. Okay. M to the power of mod n, mod n. Okay, so C is the cipher text. The M, whatever the text we have, M is the the plain text, power e, mod n. And the decryption can be done. M is the the decrypt uh, plain text. C is the cipher text, cipher text power d. D is the the inverse of your e, d mod n. Through this we can decryption. Okay, this is the seven steps that is being used. Okay, fine. Let us take an example. This first, what we have to do, you we have to choose two prime numbers. For example's sake, I've taken only these uh, two numbers, the same mala, Sheila and mala, okay, Sheila and mala. Okay. So what Sheila wants to send some message to mala. So what the mala for that mala. She wants to create a public key and private key. So what Mala does? She chooses two prime numbers, p, q. P is eleven and q is three. This is the first step. And then she compute n into p. She compute n. 
okay 11 threes are 33 fine and then she finds the eyeless function eyeless pi function so pi of n is the number n is factorized into the p and q okay fundamental theorem of arithmetic 200 years ago euclid has given this okay any number can be factorized as the product of primes in exactly one way okay so this is, is given and the eyeless pi function pi of n would be the what is it the number of integer less than n that are relatively prime n okay so p minus 1 q minus 1 okay so would be 11 is 11 minus 1 into 3 minus 1 10 twos are 20 pi n she found now she is going to choose an integer e that integer lies between 1 and pi and such that the greatest common divisor between e and pi should be 1. Such e she will choose. So she chose 3. Okay, she has chosen 3. Greatest common divisor, 3 and 20 is 1, of course. Now what she does, she has to find the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of multiplicative inverse. Okay, fine. So we know this, what is it, the multiplicative inverse we have done, right? If A is belongs to Zn, A inverse will also be there to find it out. Uh, the multiplicate inverse of your A, A into A inverse or A into A inverse congruent 1 mod n. Isn't it? Mod n. So through this, we can find it out. So to find it out, the inverse of this, what is that? So what is that? Three, let us take 3 inverses x. Okay. So what is that? 3 into x congruent 1 mod 20 isn't it here pi of n is 20 okay part 20 fine so 3x plus minus 1 20k that k belongs to z and then bring this term here 26k plus 1 what value you would substitute at k so that this will be divided by 3 so if i take k is equal to 1 what is that you can have 26 26 plus 1, 27 by 3. Sorry, 20, right? Sorry, 20. So 21 will be getting. So this will be, what is it? 7. 7 threes are 21. The multiplicative inverse for 3 is 7. So D is equal to 7 that we have taken. So this is the, the multiplicative inverse she does. Okay. And then she reveal her public key. The public key is N and D. E. N is the the multiplicative of uh, multiplicative of uh, two prime numbers okay so 33 and e okay so only these two value numbers she will reveal to the public but she won't reveal the private key the d p q the prime numbers okay the, the p and q are the factorization of you this n okay d is the the multiplicative inverse of your e she won't reveal here the encryption key is what is that? C congruent M. M is the plain text. Here M is the plain text. C is the cipher text. Okay, cipher text. So whatever the message she has, what is that? Power 3. Whatever the value she obtains under mod 33, she'll be getting that would be the what is that? ciphertext and then to decryption ciphertext power d d is 7 or 33 okay now what is that mala would do sheila wants to send the message to sheila sheila wants to send the message to mala she mala takes this key public key 33 and 3 okay she wants to send this message email she wants to send the message email okay the eighth letter is five mth letter 13 eighth letter is one ith letter is nine and l is 12 okay the encrypted is so what is the first letter five is taken five power three more 33 whatever we obtain 26 is z similarly 19 here 
eight position is one and c and nine nine power three is seven twenty nine and the mod twenty six is three this is c and then twelve cube mod twenty three this is l so what mala would do sorry sheila would send this message instead of this email she encrypted z s a c l to send it to the mala now mala how she can encrypt sorry, decrypt how she can decrypt she can decrypt to the c power 7 mod 33 okay. so through this she can get back the message email okay so one of the uh, uh, mostly or widely used to this system okay rs crypto system where we have seen how the number theory concepts are being used to make the system stronger and stronger okay and so many systems are available okay crypto system interested people you can also view how the image can be transformed okay as i said the image can be made it as the matrix we have learned okay so you can make any image also you can send it secretly okay so image can be put it as a matrix and then by using the proper crypto system you can send the image and then what they can do they can through the inverse they can find it out what the image that they have sent through the image and through the graphically also you can share the information okay graph theory is now one of the area where the people are working okay so uh, information can be drawn as a graph and the graph can be what is it encrypt you can encrypt okay with the property and then you can send the what is it uh, encrypted graph to the person the person will uh, decrypt okay graphically you can share the information okay so graph theory is the one of the area where you can we can think it over people are working a lot of people are working okay so from this what we understood number theory and linear algebra the system of linear equation were used in the il cipher or really plays a dominant role okay so so always uh, study this linear algebra and number theory and still i want to say here and the current trend is what is it data analysis so whenever you take uh, some data you want any information you got the bunch of information how one can analyze it the analyst is really needed now so to good at the analysis you should be good at your statistics uh, linear algebra okay and some programming language okay so the trend is python now you know, really i appreciate uh Etheraj college has made the uh, what is it the dual degree mathematics with computing so maths with the computer you know we can do wonders okay you are good at computer mathematics not have the enough knowledge of computer definitely you cannot uh, bring it whatever you are thinking okay if you are good at both definitely you can be the good mathematicians okay and that's the reason here in india some we are good at mathematics but uh, if we are poor in computer we cannot visualize everything we cannot bring anything any application part so in foreign if you go there and you know uh, they are working good they are parallelly good in maths and uh, computer science so uh, it's first time i'm hearing i think Last year, when we were making a syllabus for mathematics and computing at the VIT, uh, just gone through the syllabus and uh, um, of your uh, website, and it was really interesting. You know, before us, you started mathematics and computing. So it's really appreciation to the Department of Mathematics and Computing for doing a wonderful job. And uh, these are the reference that I've taken for my talk. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon to everybody. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for today's webinar. On behalf of Department of Mathematics with Computer Applications, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to our resource person, Dr. Mr. A. Felix, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, VIT, Chennai, for his wonderful and interesting uh, webinar on the evolution of cryptography through number theory. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to respected Madam Principal, Dr. S. Kodai, Vice Principal, Dr. T. B. Usharani Aided, and uh, Dr. T. Usha Priya, self supporting, and to our beloved head of the department, Mrs. K. Prasalakshmi, ma'am, for her constant support and guidance in all our steps. I would like to thank my colleagues for their hard work and support. Last but not the least, to our, I, I would like to thank our budding mathematicians and to all the students and teachers of other department for being a great listener. Thank you all. I hope everybody enjoyed. Have a nice day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.